Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Anne and this is the Health Hub. I hope you all are doing well. And um, I think it's very appropriate of a video because it's the beginning of the year a lot of people just recently got placed. Um, even though it doesn't shy away or it doesn't take focus from the situation that's currently happening, especially with placements, especially of people post serve I know that there's also struggles with placements for um, internship. I think it's really, it's really, really a big issue that's currently happening, especially that medical doctors are having to face because job security was never an issue um, for medical doctors. We were, you know, you'd graduate, you'd automatically place wherever. Um, after placement for internship, you'd automatically be placed wherever for ComServe. Um, and then from ComServe on, onwards, basically whatever hospital that you'd be working in would automatically absorb you. So I honestly, um, honestly, it's, it's really bad that at this point in time, there's no guarantees. I think another thing that sparked a lot of the, the problems is the fact that um, universities increase their quota in terms of their number of medical students that they're taking. Um, most students at some point were taken to Cuba to study medicine so now you can only imagine um, that the government puts an effort in you know making sure that there's more doctors that are taken to schools but then um, no hospitals are built so you're still working with the same number of hospitals we're still working with the same number of clinics same number of posts or even less it's not that way we're currently working um, there you know there, there's a lot of doctors they're not there aren't doctors at all so even as is it's not a matter of you know that there's you know this the, the, the whole industry is saturated because there's a lot of us it's just a matter of the government you know allocating the funds and creating more posts more posts for hospitals more posts in clinics so that there's doctors working in primary level healthcare uh, more doctors in you know community healthcare centers or CHCs so it's a matter of the government just making sure that they fund for posts because there are doctors there are doctors who are willing to work, work who are unemployed sitting at home so with that being said today i'll be talking about comserve and what to do to make sure that you are absorbed by your current hospital i know i know it's like there's no formula to it i know that even even if you do the most like you could still end up jobless or unemployed even if you've done all of the things that i've been mentioning but i think it's things just to take note of and to consider when going into comserve things that may be of benefit in assisting you getting absorbed by the hospital where you're currently working or just giving you a competitive edge over over your peers when it comes to application process after you finish your comserve so yeah take note of these things currently the situation is that you find that the hospital will have maybe let's say 10 concerts and only have maybe five or four post conserve posts so so then that is where the competition starts that is where then you have to prove yourself and prove your your skill and adequacy and i know it's not meant to be like that you're not meant to be having to prove yourself because the fact that you went through six years of medical school you went through two years of internship should show that you actually are capable but then it's just things that to improve your overall portfolio so that to increase your chances of getting absorbed by the hospital or just giving you a competitive edge over your peers so the first thing you can do is actually um make sure that you don't slack during your conserve what do I mean by slacking? So what I mean is that make sure that you arrive to work on time. <laughs> make sure that you arrive to work. Make sure that you actually do the work when you are there. At the level of ComServe, people tend to almost forget that ComServe is also a contract. So you get two years of internship, which is a contractual agreement where you are meant to be taught and rotate through the various departments. Um, you learn, you, that's where you acquire your skills. Come serve most of the time you will be placed either in one department or you'll do maybe six months in one department and six months in another so it's of utmost important for you to remember and to take note of the fact that you know it's still a contractual agreement or you still are on a contract and you have to act like i know that there's this whole thing of you know um when when people are already like secured they have already secured their jobs or working in government some won't show up for the job some will be late all the time some someone it will even submit sick notes without being sick so that's something that tends to happen a lot you know and i just want you to understand that you cannot do that especially when you are at the level of conserve you have to understand that you're trying to leave an impression and that when they think of those four spots to feel that your name has to come in mind so in as much as i know like guys it's hard like mentally is exhausting and you don't want to be in constant competition and you don't want to be in constant like 
at a state where you're having to try to prove yourself. But the reality of the situation is that that's where we are and that's where we're finding ourselves at the level of Comserve. So you have to make sure and that you're actually disciplined in the way that you operate. Even when you are at work, you have to make sure that you actually do the work and not just like disappear. Guys, people do a lot of these things. I know people, these bad habits start at the level of internship and people carry them through over, especially when they're working in non-academic centers. I know in academic centers, people are like, I don't know, man, like there's this, I don't know if you've worked in non-academic centers, people just generally have an attitude, like a don't care attitude, where they won't pitch to work, or they just, like, not be fully committed to their job, like, um, say they're sick all the time, and things like that. I know if you've actually only worked at academic facilities, you might not be familiar with this type of behavior, but lo and behold, that when you are actually in these like small areas and things like that people tend you find doctors who laze around who don't pitch for work who just always have excuses so you just have to just try try by all means not to be that person okay like it's just one year like maybe wait until you're permanent <laughs> maybe wait until you're permanent okay and then now let's move on to the second thing that you have to do make sure that you expand or equip your resume with um, with the courses, right? So you have to make sure that you use that time adequately enough. I don't think it makes sense for one, but I know there's interns who are like hardcore and wanting to do things fast and whatnot, but these certificates, some of these courses expire. So so I don't find um, I don't find benefit in you doing ACLS, BLS, ATLS and all these courses during internship, but maybe during internship you can apply um, maybe to write for these courses when you are already a comserv. Yeah, well, you can do short courses like ACLS, BLS, those emergency medicine courses, and they are of utmost importance because um, they do take these into consideration, especially if you will be placed maybe in a casualty or in the emergency department. So they also take note of these things when you will be placed in a surgical specialty or surgical department. Look for courses to do. Some of these courses are actually free, guys. Like. Um, Foundation of Professional Development has courses that are actually free and they keep on dropping them, like maybe infection control in the um, healthcare environment. These courses are not only important in that they help build your resume, but they are important in you getting and acquiring CPD points. So CPD points are basically continued professional development points. Um, they are an indication basically or a requirement by the HPCSA or the, the our whole health board um, to make sure that we keep studying and we keep learning and keeping up to date with the most recent and most like up-to-date information so that's why it's of important and it's like there's a minimum requirement so basically over a course of 24 months there'll be five ethical points and 30 clinical these are taken into consideration are important because if you end up being audited like they'll randomly go through a list like it's like throwing <laughs> like putting their hand into a bag and if your name comes up and they make and they and they you know do an audit to, and they see that you're not up to date with your points then you can get to a point where they they force you and it's it's intense like you don't want to get to that point you can also be strategic in the way that you select your courses to make sure that you are sort of like building a resume for your future rich post that you're trying to apply for. If you want to specialize in psychiatry, you can do maybe um, a course in like, there are short courses in like mental health in the health environment. You can also do a diploma in like mental health. So this will also assist in you when it comes to you applying for a registrar post if you want to specialize early. Just to make sure that you are on top of your game when it comes to the, the body of work that you have. So the third thing, that you can do in order to improve your chances of being um, absorbed um, by the hospital that you're currently working in as a comserve going forward. Making sure that you are equipped in a specialty in terms of the skills, specialties that are of high demand or high need. You're asked to be placed in a department that is an area of need. So which departments basically are of high demand? Yeah, well, so I know, I know, no one loves obstetrics, no one loves gyne, but the fact of the matter is that because not a lot of people like it and, and, and because a lot of people tend to dodge or avoid it, it's an area of high demand and unfortunately, unfortunately, they'll constantly want doctors who are skilled in obstetrics and gynecology and that is, that is the unfortunate reality. That is a very, very unfortunate reality. I'm not doing rush, I'm not saying, so I'm not saying rush off and do ONG or whatever, but maybe you can ask to do half of your comp serve in obstetrics and gynae, even if you know you're not going to specialize in it. And this is why. A lot of these small hospitals, and I'm talking, oh, Butterworth Hospital, these small town hospitals want people who can do basic 
things like Caesar, <laughs> like an ectopic for Zegel. Like I know there's people who post comments are going to interviews, and the first things that they asked was, okay, um, can you do a Caesar? Can you do an ectopic? Because those hospitals are in need of people who have that skill, and unfortunately. That's where it's come to. Because there's not a lot of people who like ONG or are skilled in obstetrics and gynae, you find that there's these small hospitals that have theater facilities and are in need of doctors who are able to cut, who are able to, to do ectopics, cesarean sections, and etc. So they'll definitely, definitely will consider you first if you say, um, post comp serve basically that um, you can cut and you have done ectopics and you have done scissors and etc. So it's basically a skill that is good to know so that if you find yourself jobless one day or stranded and, and you know not having a job that you have at least that competitive edge over your peers. A lot of these hospitals even when I was an intern they always say Ikaini area of need area of don't don't high importance whatever so it's something that will sort of like benefit you should you be stranded you don't have to specialize in it it doesn't have to contribute in your future or whatever but should you find yourself in an, in an area or spot in your life where you cannot find a job or that at least you have something to offer because comserves are allowed to choose where they rotate and they just negotiate among each other so maybe you can just ask the people around before you start that hi dog um please, you know, um, can you give me information about like the areas of need um, in this community or in this hospital? Some places will um, prioritize internal medicine, so they'll require you to have that skill. But I feel like internal medicine, I mean, you can Google like the dose for whatever disease that there is. Um, I feel like it's not a physical skill or a skill set science, like really. So we can always all maneuver our way through internal medicine and learn on the way, Google, whatever, if you've forgotten. Key number four, like be nice to the people that you're working with. Like don't have like an attitude. I'm talking interpersonal relationships with your co-workers because um, at times, um, who, whenever it comes to the selection process or whoever it is that they pick, you, they might ask advice or just comments from the people that are around that you're working with. Like, what type of person is this? Like, is, what type of person is she? Like, is she nice? Is she working hard? Is she? Yes, in terms of knowledge, we might all be the same. The way in which we interact with our co-workers, the way we interact with our patients, will say a lot about who you are and what you stand for. So it is important that you also form relationships don't be i'm not trying to saying like be friends with people whatever but it's important that you are in good terms with the people that are around be it nurses be it like x-ray people be it don't don't you have to be in good terms even when it comes to being you know in good terms with management because even in management like they also contribute and also play a role you find that one of the panelists is basically your clinical manager yeah so so it is of utmost importance that you take notes of the way that you interact with people the last thing is i don't think it's the most important thing but i think it's it also plays a role in whether or not you get absorbed at the hospital and that is how you perform during that interview now i've never been in, in, in any interview panelist or don't i don't know the things the kind of things they ask and whatnot but I think the most important thing is to make sure that you are confident and that you are prepared when it comes to the interview so that you are able to speak for yourself and, you know, able to defend yourself and defend your knowledge and defend, you know, everything that you stand for when it comes to, to you expressing yourself and basically explaining to them, you know, giving them reasons why they should take you. But I feel like the interview is just like um, formality. Sometimes the interview is just a formality. So, so everything else comes first, whether you are availing yourself. There's no one to do a call. Were you the one to say, okay, it's fine, I will do it. Or were you the one who's just like, no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am, not me. Or were you the one to say, oh, I didn't know I was on call. Can someone else do the call? Like, these people actually don't pitch for calls. Like, guys, like, truth. There's people who just won't pitch for a call for no reason. So, we need to, guys, people have balls out here. Like, <laughs> People are doing the absolute mostest. I'm not talking about just comp service going onwards. I'm talking about even interns not pitching for calls. Quilit, quilit. But with that being said, guys, you can do all of these things and the government won't make sure that there's a post in your hospital and you will be jobless. So 
sometimes you know sometimes it will help in situations where competition is at play and i hope you know the trade union you know, samatu no sama and etc like they raise this issue and make it like a public thing that is made known or when they make a strike i know doctors aren't allowed to strike but it's, it's something that's of utmost importance like you can't study for six years go through internship and the next thing now comes the next thing now you don't you, you can't find work you know you can't get a so, job yeah, i hope you found this video beneficial and helpful um and um, if you're doing any of these things or you're planning to do any of these things when you get to the level of comserve or you're ready to comserve just make sure you link them down below let's have a so, check yeah i hope you found this video helpful um make sure you like comment subscribe share the video to anyone who you think will you know benefit from it or will enjoy it um thanks for watching um i will catch you on my next video